Hi everyone, my name is Joe Balabushko. My career was spent as a sign painter and gilder, mostly around Chicago, and I've done this work for decades, thrown a lot of gold. I'm just trying to share some information with everyone that people that are just trying to get going. So what we're gonna do here is first of all, describe what first and second surface gilding is. When you reach out and tap the surface, that's for surface gilding. It's on letters and monuments and all sorts of things like that. Second surface gilding is not the front side of the glass, but the back side. Everything's done in reverse so that the person looking at the item sees it and they can read the lettering or the message. Very brief, quick explanation. It's good enough to get going. The items that you see here are items that I, as a, I guess a traveling sign painter, would use. You don't have to worry about this. It doesn't look like it's going to go into a box very easily, but this little box right here is what I used throughout my entire working life with all the stuff I needed to go from job to job and guild just fine. So let's get going. This, of course, 23 karat gold and various other carats of gold. It's what you'll need for doing the work. This is called a gilder's tip. It's the item that you use to pick up the gold. And the way you do it is you charge the gold tip with a little oil on the back of your hand and use just basically body lotion to charge this. I'll show you how it's done. I got this out here because I know some people, can't believe it, do use petroleum jelly. I think it's too oily and it will contaminate the tip when you're trying to pick up the gold. In other words, you won't be able to transfer the gold as easily as you should with this on your flesh. I use a board when I'm gilding to hold the book of gold in position. There's a little lip here where the heel of the gold We'll go right here so you can keep moving through the, the book of gold. And it's this way because I travel a lot and it's comfortable doing that. Some people like to use just a little square of material. In this case, it's leather to hold the book of gold and work from that. In studio work in general is not done this way. It's done from a gilder's pad. This is like a felt underneath and then a goat skin or chamois leather skin on top. So a leaf of gold can be put on and then cut very carefully with a gilder's knife. Now these knives are not sharp, but they're highly polished with no glitches when you pull them across your fingernail like that. What I used in my working life were folding knives because they worked very, very well. This happens to be a uh, buck knife. What I didn't realize was as I got this decades ago for not much money, is that they're now extremely collectible and go for usually a couple of hundred bucks and more. Nice, not required. This blade is not sharp. It will not make a mark on my nail, but it's extremely highly polished. And the way I do that is with extremely fine wet dry paper, and then a ceramic rod. And that's it. That's all you need. And then keeping it clean with isopropyl alcohol. For a really good traveling knife, these Openel knives from France come in all different sizes from very small to quite large, almost like a machete. The thing is what part I use for cutting the gold isn't this straight part like on this studio knife. It's basically this part of the blade that does all the work as it's being pushed. I mean, pulled across the leaf. First of all, I push away to get the gold cracked, then pull. So it's basically this little rounded edge that does all the work for you. It's very effective. Next thing you'll need is 
a bucket. Some people use round ones. This will um, carry about 16 ounces of uh, size or about 473 milliliters to about here. The gilder's tips or mops are these brushes that go into the size, you pick the size up, put it on a window, and as that is flowing down the window, you apply the gold. And um, in general, what I like to do is hold the bucket, my gilder's tip and knife and all that in hand so that I could apply the size, hold the gold, cut it if I wanted to use half sheets or smaller sheets, use the gilder's tip, charge it with some oil on the back of my hand, pick up the gold, go to the window. In order to make the size, what you need is gelatin. Now in the olden times, um, generally used uh, capsules, but nowadays people like to use, instead of these capsules, use about one to one and a half for 16 ounces of water. You don't want to make the size too strong because then you'll get a dull gild. But what it seems like everybody is going to are these gelatin diamonds. My daughter got these for me from Germany. And I know they're available all over the place. You don't necessarily have to have the German ones. And what they look like are these little diamonds of gelatin. Two of these to a pint of size is the recipe. I always made a pint because generally my jobs were larger than ordinary. But if you want to make a half a pint, you use one of these. And basically, to make the size, you'll take eight ounces of water approximately, take two of the diamonds, drop them in, let the water be absorbed into that gelatin, for maybe five minutes. Heat that mix for about two minutes. Bring it out, mix it so that you cannot see the diamonds anymore. And when it's really clear that the gel has melted, add the rest of the water, put it back in the microwave, heat it for about two more minutes. You don't want to boil it. Swish it around again so that you're sure that the Gelatin has melted, and a lot of people like to take a sieve. This is a tea sieve for making tea. And just pour the gelatin mix through this just to make sure there are no portions of it that haven't been melted. Okay. After you've done your gold leaf work, and the leaf has dried, it's time to burnish it. Now, I'm really condensing all this information so you don't get bored. We'll go into farther discussions about doing this work in a little while. After the gold has dried, you burnish it with a number of things. In the early days, I was told to use cotton. I don't like it because impurities can scratch the gold. Then I started using app, um, makeup application pads, which did a tremendously good job without scratching anything. My friend Robert Fries manufactures these or has them done and they're available from the Goldfather. He's in Chicago. I would say that this right here is actually my favorite burnishing tool. Once the gold is burnished and you've painted on it or silk screen on it, then you have to remove the excess gold. What I always like to do is use cheesecloth. You can use, say, a soft old t-shirt. And um, typically what was used was Bonami. It's very difficult to find this stuff nowadays. This is an antique bar that's probably 60 years old. It's given to me. This Gilder soap as it's called, is available from W&B Gold in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. There probably are other dealers that sell this stuff, but W&B has everything 
in the world that you need to do any kind of gilding work. So that's why it's out there. I only talk about companies and products that I have used in my career. I'm not advertising anything. I don't get paid by anybody. It's just stuff that worked for me. So in order to do your size, you will need something to mix the gold in, the size in. Going out to a job site, I used to do the size making in the morning before I went to work, carry it to work and things like that. And off to work I went. I know this has been a really simplified version of what turns out to be a great career and a real money maker. So I hope it wasn't boring. Um, we can get into details on how to use each one of these products. But to make myself clear, all of this stuff wrapped up and packaged easily goes into this kit. And in this kit is my solvents, my paint, my washout for the brushes, to clean the brushes after they've been used, a couple of drawers full of brushes, these are the bigger ones. These are the smaller ones to do the detailed work like outlining and backing up of the gold leaf. And up here is just paraphernalia. Um, pencils, dry brushes, palette knives, uh, storage for my gilder's knife, Q-tips, all those little things that you really need to complete a job. Again, it's extremely condensed. You can go from one job to another with a box like this and just make plenty of money. Back here is my mall stick that gets screwed together. Some basic tools, pliers, screwdrivers, and all my equipment for picking up the gold, moving it into position. So I think that's it for this video. Um, Hope it didn't put you to sleep uh, and, and hope it was useful for you. Bye for now.